Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married, you have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and, and do's of a born-again couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. Grace and peace to you. Welcome to Ask Pastor Gemma. In the event that you're a first time viewer, my name is Gemma Duncan, and my husband, Apostle Vivian Duncan, and I are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center. Our headquarters is located in Digo Martin, Trinidad, opposite Southernix Drive and the Digo Martin Main Road. We have branches in Sangri Grandi, in Chogonas, in Faisabad. There's a branch in Tobago and one in Antigua. Our online branch, fully online, is in Rio Claro. Our administrative office hours are from Monday to Thursday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the business center is opened from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Our main services are on Sunday at 9 a.m., which is a live service. You can go physically to each branch and uh, you will be welcome there or you can take us in online as most of you would do and then we have two weekly services thursday and friday nights at 7 p.m nightly which is fully online the school of intercession on mondays at uh, 7 30 p.m la pasta is teaching we started last year very interesting series on intercession we know that intercession is a special type of prayer where we stand as we say in the gap for others how do you pray for other people and we do that all of the time all of us have people that we pray for from time to time today i interrupt our little discussion on prayer just to share with you the marriage confessional episode 23 really interesting episode entitled the evolution of love where dion shares the lessons he learned in their 14 years of marriage. You need to call up a friend. It's about the best presentation I've heard over the years, even in my own experience after almost 47 years of marriage. I can tell you the truth. I learned quite a bit from just listening to Dion share on his experiences. If you watched episode 22, you would know that we have been celebrating our anniversary of 14 uh, year wedding anniversary. And we've been so grateful to God for keeping us, preserving us and continuing to bless us on this journey so far. And in the wake of that, we have decided to talk about some lessons that we've learned along the way. We only talked about two of those lessons um, in the last episode. So today we are going to continue uh, in that same thread, uh, talking about lessons that we have learned along the way. And I'm going to hand it over to my handsome husband to kick us off. Yes. And uh, if you also watched the last episode, you would know that what we are talking about, we have not shared with each other. Exactly. So we are hearing for the first time uh, from each other what we thought we learned from each other. And we thought that would have been an interesting mm -hmm. element mm -hmm. to the conversation. Yeah. And today I have a, I have a doozy. Okay. This, is, this is a good right. one. Oh. Uh, and I'm waiting. Yes. Hear. You're ready. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so my lesson for this episode, uh, so what I've learned is the meaning of love. The meaning of love. After 14 years, I could safely wow. look back at my younger self 
and I could see the evolution of mm. love and my understanding of love, my experience of love, our experience of love mm -hmm. during this time. Mm -hmm. So let's go for a journey. Let's wow. go for a journey. <laughs> let's go for a journey. All right. When I asked you to be my girlfriend back in 1998, I liked you. And I think uh, I like the idea of you. You are pretty girl, pretty face, and you know, nice brown skin. And mm -hmm. <laughs> I, 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 I liked you, and I, I definitely started having an attraction for you. And in those days, it was, you know, the innocent birds and the bees type attraction. We were kids. Mm -hmm. This was back in 1998. And as I mentioned, my love for you at that point was affection based. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm building something here. And over time, as years progressed, I realized that, you know, we started to become a couple, the neighborhood, you know, we were the neighborhood couple, everybody knew us, when they didn't see us, they would be like, how are you guys doing? Yeah. When they saw one, they didn't see the other, they would be like, you know, where's your, where's your boy or where's your girl, you know, yeah. what's happening there? So, uh, and as I said, we started to, track, to, to, to progress along the continuum of love. Mm -hmm. So we started with attraction, nice pretty girl, turned into affection because I really started to have feelings towards you. Mm. Okay? Feeling towards you. And we moved on past that stage as we got older into young adulthood mm -hmm. and we started to make emotional connections. Right. So, started with attraction, mm -hmm. physical, I like you, nice looking. Having affection, started to have feelings towards each other, and then an emotional connection. Mm -hmm. This is where you, the phase of love, where at least I experience, where if you are happy, I am happy. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy, then we're not happy. Mm -hmm. If I am sad, then we are not happy. We are not sad. You understand what I'm saying? We are sad. And we started to feel what each other is feeling. Mm -hmm. The emotional connection yeah. phase of things. And, you know, that, over time, that was a natural progression. Now, beyond the, beyond the emotional connection, to go to the next stage of love, at least for me, mm -hmm. it required a commitment. Yeah. And you could remember in my young girl, adult days, yeah. I didn't know what commitment was. I was a right. young kid. kid, 19, 20 years old, commitment, what's that? Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to live my life, trying to figure out who I was. Mm -hmm. we, we spoke about that in previous episodes. Mm -hmm. And... Eventually, I found myself mm -hmm. and I was willing to commit. Yeah. And as soon as we got into the commitment phase of our relationship, yeah. a whole dimension of love opened up for dimension. me. A whole yeah. brand new dimension of love. Yeah. This is the phase of love where spending time with you is as important as breathing. Mm. Now, let me tell you I've been thinking about this for the last week and change. <laughs> so... Uh, and I still don't think I have the right words to Aww. give it justice. Yeah. So at that stage of our commitment, the first yeah. phase of being with you was like breathing. Mm -hmm. And as you could remember, we were in uh, different states. We were doing a long distance yeah, relationship. Yeah. Well, first of all, we left our country, Trinidad yes. and Tobago. Yes. Right, which we, where we met. Yes. And, you know, had that initial connection as teenagers, young teens. And then, you know, cross the waters, came to the, a different country. U.S. came for college. We were in different states and all of that. And still managing to maintain a connection. Yes. <clears throat> so, as I said, commitment was uh, open up that dimension where I can't, I need to be, mm -hmm. I need to be with you. I need to, mm -hmm. I need to be on the phone. If I'm not with you, we're on the phone all the time. Mm -hmm. And we, we were at that stage of our lives where, we literally did what we needed to do during the week so that on the weekend, right. we could get each other. And exactly. I, re I remember that song. You know that song? Um, you could meet me by railway, yeah. take a trailway. Um, yeah. No matter how you get there, get there if you can. Yeah. That was our life for a couple of years. Yeah, Every Friday, yeah. I'm at work, you at work. It doesn't matter. Somebody's yeah. taking a train, bus, car, <laughs> renting a car, <laughs> taking a plane, we were finding a way to, f to get each other. Yeah. And that was the commitment stage. We were committed to each other. Mm -hmm. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't, uh, uh, everything. I was consumed by being with you and, 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 and building a, a, a relationship with you, getting to know you, mm -hmm. getting to experience you. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that point, experiencing that, being in two separate places, I knew that something had to change. Mm -hmm. So 
when you were thinking about what is your long-term play, am yeah. I going to look for a new Absolutely. job? Am I going back to school? Yeah. What's happening? I was like, there's no way you're going to make a decision to move anywhere away from me. We did the long distance thing long enough. Yeah. I was like, I'm ready to take the commitment and turn that into a covenant. Mm. So we spoke about attraction, mm. affection, emotional connection, making the commitment and then turning that commitment into covenant. And the reason why I'm making those designations is because many people, many relationships out there go through these phases mm -hmm. and they're not able to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're ready? You're, you're, how are we going so far? <laughs> you're going good. good. You're going good. So I was like, I need to take, uh, take it to a covenant. When we decided to get married mm -hmm. and when we did eventually get married, mm -hmm. the, the, my love for you Mm. had to evolve yeah. because now, now that we are living together, I had to learn how to love you mm. because before I was in love with the, with the Leah who I saw when we were on dates, yeah. the Leah who I saw when we spent weekends together, the Leah who I saw on the good times, the face of you. Mm -hmm. Now I had to love the you who I didn't see, the 80% of you that I wasn't accustomed to. Right, the Leah having a bad day. The Leah having a bad day. Right. The Leah with a silk scarf on her head. The Leah who's, <laughs> who's, who's not feeling well. Right. The Leah who's emotional about something, who's upset yeah. about something. The yeah. Leah who's upset about work, who's uh, uh, insecure about something. Yes. All of those things do not come to play while we, while we were yeah, yeah. dating, not, really in its fullness, not in its fullness. So, yeah. as, so as soon as we took it to covenant, that is where the whole empathy and compassion mm -hmm. side of things came for me. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, it grew our love to the point where my love for you became, how could I evolve mm -hmm. to help this relationship? Right. So selfless. He's selfless. Yeah. We start getting into the selfless yeah. love. Mm -hmm. How I could evolve. Not, all right, it's a, it's a give and take, but it was no longer tit for tat. It was no longer mm -hmm. equal, 50-50. It became, mm -hmm. how could I evolve? How could I change? Mm -hmm. What could I do? What could I say? Mm -hmm. uh, and it really morphed into empathy and compassion. Oh, remember, we couldn't get here mm -hmm. if we didn't start with attraction. Yeah. And attraction never changed. You're still beautiful. You're still a nice brown skin uh, young lady. And all of that is the foundation on all yeah. this is built. Now, just when I thought I had it mastered about how, uh, about my love for you, I thought we were maxed out on my love for you. We went and had children. Mm. And my capacity to love you became exponential because now after learning you and experiencing you mm. for for all those years mm -hmm. i got to see you in a new dimension of motherhood yeah. and motherhood has unlocked in you something that has turned up the ante of my love to you mm -hmm. seeing how you love our children seeing how you take care of them see, seeing how you do motherhood mm -hmm. allows me allowed me and allows me now to see See you in new dimensions mm -hmm. and then of course to be able to partner with you and be luck step with you I need to increase and or not necessarily increase love you know but really evolve the way yeah. how I love you right mm -hmm. right and this is remember this is this is just hmm. this is just a continuum this is just the story yeah. of, of, of how we do it now what I realized is now that we are in this phase of our love it is no longer just attraction not affection we are way past emotional connections i would say we have deep emotional connections i could actually feel what you feel without you telling me what yeah. you feel uh co commitment was made covenant is still going strong yeah. uh, uh, uh i can't breathe when you're not there feeling that i have to have your wrong that still exists the butterflies the birds and the bees all of those things still exist <laughs> but now we are at the stage of love where it is sacrificial like, I, I almost want to steal that song title called Dangerously in Love. It's the dangerous, sacrificial type of love where I will give of myself mm -hmm. for you to be happy. Where I would put my life on the line to protect you and our children. Mm -hmm. That kind of dangerous, sacrificial love. And dangerous, not in the terms of, oh my gosh, it's toxic for the relationship. I'm so dangerous in terms of, oh my gosh, I'm willing to deny me mm -hmm. for you. And I, like, I'm thinking about this over the, the last few years, over the last couple of weeks, days, I mean, and it's, it's crazy trying to find the language mm -hmm. for this love that I'm feeling yeah. and the love that we've experienced in the last mm -hmm. half of our lifetime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And but, I mean, yes, oh my God, 
so many things there. <laughs> and it's it's, it's, it's it's a lot. And I, I want to I want to make sure and I want to make sure <laughs> we understand this. So what I'm trying to tell you is that the love that I experienced when I first met you, mm. though it pales in comparison, mm -hmm. it was the in, initial catalyst and ingredient right. for us to get to where we are. Right. So right. I call it necessary. yes. So I call it, and I'll let you comment a bit on it, but I call it Dion's Pyramid of Love. Hmm. Starting okay. from the bottom, the foundation okay. of attraction. Right. You must have attraction. On top of attraction, affection. That's mm. where you start having feelings for each other. Yes. Beyond the feelings for each other, there's the emotional connection. Yeah. Right? We're going up the pyramid here. Emotional connection. <laughs> Once you make that emotional connection, you go into what we call true love. Mm. Love. You're starting to feel selfless. Mm -hmm. You're starting to do things for each other. You're starting to uh, anticipate others' needs. That's a selfless piece. But many people reach true love without making the commitment. Mm -hmm. That's true. Because you could have true love without making the commitment. Mm -hmm. And many people reach true love without making the commitment. Uh -huh. yeah. To move beyond true love, you have to make that commitment. Yeah. I'm going to go steady. Yeah. We are going to be committed to each other. Yeah. You are mine. I am yours. You're nobody else. We're mm -hmm. not going to talk to each other. We're going to be exclusive. Yeah. But talk to other people. Yes, either. you have to go beyond that. Mm -hmm. Covenant. Mm -hmm. Covenant is a whole different category that we couldn't really talk about mm -hmm. because of the length of time that we have. But covenant is where you introduce God. Mm. into the marriage yeah, yeah. or into the relationship turn and transition it into marriage you introduce god as a third party yeah. so you enter a new dimension of love where you are comfortable not just to each other mm -hmm. but to god mm -hmm. yeah so and, and as i said we didn't talk about a lot of it but in covenant this is the love and we, ex we we experience this where the love that you experience transcends crisis mm -hmm. transcends tragedy Mm -hmm. You go through a tragic experience, and we've been through real traumatic experiences. Yeah. And uh, coming out of that, it has given us a cement, a bond wow. that makes us unshakable, yeah. unmovable, unbreakable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where who cares what we deal with next? Yeah. Who cares if we live in a nice house or if we share air mattress together? Yeah. We're doing this thing called life together, together. because yeah. we've come through so much. Yeah. And then on the top of the pyramid, sacrificial love. I'm mm -hmm. willing to deny myself. Mm. In order for you to be happy, mm. the unspermit of love. <laughs> okay, so I was supposed to respond to this. <laughs> this this is what I've learned. This is this is what I've learned, and I think, and 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 it took me, to be honest with you, it took me two weeks to find a language mm. Mm -hmm. to express what I just expressed mm -hmm. because I couldn't. The love that I feel it, I can't. How do I how do I explain what we've yeah, been through in the last <laughs> in the last yeah. 15 16 17 years that we've spent together? But how do you right. how do you feel about that? What do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, but well, well, which part? Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's so many parts. But one one thing that uh, really I think jumped out at me um you know, when you're talking about I guess learning to love me and and being selfless and all of that is um you know, you hit the nail on the head with that, on, on the head with that in terms of, um, you know, as we grew as a couple, as we grew as a couple, learning to love me, um, and I just learning to love me, but loving me in the way I want to be loved and I need to be loved. Right. What does that look like? Right. You know, what are my needs? And, um, you know, are, are you loving me right? Meaning that, um, in a way that I that, that works for you that works for me that, yes. that that satisfies my needs yes. as your wife yes you know and I think um, I think we've had conversations and we've you know obviously over time been able to to vocalize those needs and I think that's very important understanding what your partner's needs are as you evolve right and as you grow because as I said um, as you move through different stages, you change you every evolve. season of life. You change, um, and you have to evolve with it. Yeah. In some cases, you have to evolve ahead of the curve yeah. because when the challenges come, yeah. we could understand. Let me let me put this out there. Yeah. I could understand why people walk out on relationships because mm -hmm. when things get tough, if you don't have the resolve wow. to evolve 
how you think, how you entreat, mm -hmm. and ultimately how you love your partner. Wow. You're going to run away. Yes. I could understand why people run away because yeah. you don't have that capacity. You don't have the, 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 the you're not desperate no, enough no. to hold on and to what not, you've and, built. Right. And you're, not, you're also not willing to let go of you. Right. Enough. Right. To say, you know what? Okay. Right. I need to, you know, I need to be selfish. I need to be vulnerable here. I yes. need to put down you know, all of these things I'm so tethered to, yes. to understand how we can move forward. What can I do? Yes. You know, and, and maybe there's too much bravado. Maybe there's too much, you know, I am this and that, um, to be able to, to, to then move forward. And a lot of people will rather walk away and not deal with it than say, than you know to what? change and yeah. to force themselves to evolve, evolve and look to change, themselves in the mirror than to, than to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Yes. Like I, you know, I need to work on this. How can you help me work on this together? You know, all of those things are so important. Um, in the, the mix of, 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 of evolving and being successful, moving through the stages. Um, and in our case, because we met at such a young age, we were kids, right? We would put, 14 and 15 um, and evolving from, you know, friendship and all of that over the years into actually relation and a relationship, a committed relationship, covenant and all of that. Um, I think we've had to change and evolve and see yes. each other change and evolve many times over the years. Multiple times over yeah. and over. And mm -hmm. I, 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 would, I would wrap up at least my offering with this. Mm -hmm. Talking about the sacrificial love, I use the term dangerously in love. Mm -hmm. I remember we had a conversation a couple of years ago where, like, when I get zero focus on doing something, I deny myself. You do. <laughs> I self do matter. I could be tired, actually. I would, I would never, if both of us tired, I would you never call ask it you. I call it stubborn. I'm stubbornly in love. I would never ask you to do yeah. what I'm not willing to do. Yeah. Period. So, if I'm, if two of us, if I'm more tired than you, but you're tired, I will still get up and do it after that. I won't say that, babe, your turn or your blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. That's just not how I am. And there was a point in time where I remember it was sometime, it was Christmas time, you know, and uh, I, I was making sure that, you know, you got, I got gift for you, got gift for the boys. And, you know, uh, I think it was just Darian at that point in time. And you told me something, it's like, babe, you haven't bought yourself anything. You haven't done anything nice for yourself mm -hmm. in how long. I haven't seen you do anything for yourself. I was like, mm -hmm. well, that doesn't matter. Once you guys are good. And he was like, no, mm -hmm. babe. Like, you have to do something for you. Yeah. And I was so focused on making sure that you guys were good mm -hmm. that I was denying myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember that when I wrote the, the point on sacrificial love. And that's the essence of what sacrificial love is. You are going to go through seasons in your life where it really doesn't matter how you feel as an individual. You're going to have to push through how you feel mm -hmm. to be there for your spouse and be there for your children. How many mm -hmm. times you feel tired, you don't feel like waking up, but you have to do it so that your children could go to school or your children yeah. could get what they need. Mm -hmm. How much times you feel like quitting that job? Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, I don't do job, but you have to think, well, I have to provide for my family. Yes. And you push through the feelings, you push through the frustration, you push through the, the anxiety. What does that mean? Denying self mm -hmm. for the greater love and good that exists mm -hmm. for the family. Mm -hmm. So, I know I dominated this yeah, conversation. I totally did. <laughs> and I tried <laughs> so it to. It was one lesson. Yes. No, but actually, it, it was one lesson with many parts. Yes, many parts. And I tried to condense it to one episode. <laughs> but there's a whole lot there that Whoa. we may even talk about later on. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, this sure. whole idea of love, hmm. when you get married, and this is at least our lesson and a, and a warning for you guys to, uh, out there who are about to get married, when you get married, hmm. The definition of love as you see it is mm. going to change. Not that it's going to be, you're going to do away with what you currently have. Mm -hmm. I think what you have is just the foundation yeah. of what you're going to ultimately build together mm -hmm. as a That's unit. A yes. Yeah.
to give you a gentle reminder of what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Let Jesus' words speak for itself. God bless you. Real good.